Hey everyone, it's been uh, what three weeks since the last video. Um, it would have been two, but uh, Jason Carr had put out uh, a rather interesting uh, font solution uh, going forward for themes, um, so that it would be um, uh, a, a simple case of installing the theme through the new uh, theme manager, and there would be no uh, user involvement whatsoever. Uh, like before, you would have to install the fonts manually. That would be a thing of the past. So um, I did include the font solution in this uh, latest build, and therefore I delayed uh, putting out a video last weekend because this was uh, kind of an exciting exciting um, enhancement to Big Box and theme creation going forward. Anyway, without further ado, um, I'm going to open up the theme editor. <clears throat> and uh, right off the bat, if you've been paying close attention to uh, to previous videos, you'll see that this configuration or preferences panel here has been opened up, and I'll explain uh, the reason for that a little bit later. Um, but what I want to go over are some of the the new additions, uh, the, at least the things that you can physically see. Um, so let me go into uh, this particular theme and I guess it doesn't really matter on the particular view but um, I'll tell you what let's uh, I don't know horizontal wheel one okay and let me pick mmm uh, lordy I don't know Sega Dreamcast Okay, so now that the uh, the view is up, you'll see some other additions, okay? So I've added the genre images, I've added play mode, and we have region, okay? So I'll go over that real quick. I'm gonna go into edit. All right, so clicking on the UI element here, okay? Um, which is called genre image. You can, uh, I've got it. I've got it. Um, I've got it set to horizontal orientation, left justified, and the vertical is center. So let's just play with some of these settings. Okay. All right. And. You're allowed up to four because LaunchBox or the metadata uh, behind the scenes uh, stores up to four. Okay, but for whatever reason, if you if you only have room or you only intend to show the very first entry um, in the list, then you can say I only want to show one, and that's what it will do. All right. Um, so I just want to set it to maximum because I've got the room. So let's just play around with this for a little bit, okay? So obviously you can extend the, the width, the height, and whatnot, and as you, because it's set to orientation of um, horizontal, it will uh, resize and so on as I adjust the height, okay? Um, let me see, what else is in here that I put? Oh yeah, 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 spacing. So if you want particular spacing uh, between each of the, uh, the the images, it will it will do so. Uh, let me see now. Do I have an unknown or not known? Let's see. Yep, yep, yep. There you go. So because I said that you can show up to four, let me just get rid of the horizontal spacing. Okay. You can show up to four. Um, associated images for the genre, okay? Because I specified a fallback of unknown, it's forcing, always four, to be displayed. And you may want to do that for whatever reason. Maybe you want um, uh, the unknown icon to be, uh, have, a, have a certain opacity level uh, set to it. Um, and then as the icons, you know, the active icons or the known icons come in, they're, they're more visible, and the um, the unknown is 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 kind of more uh, in the background. I don't know if I'm describing that very well, 
but the idea being is if you if you set it to four it will show four if you have the fallback of unknown it will include that in the forcing four to be displayed and again if you only want three or if you only want two or if you only want one blah 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 okay I want it four and I don't want a fallback all right so let's change the orientation to vertical and this time it goes the other way all right so the vertical alignment was set to center maybe I want it set to top okay it's the same it's the same idea let's put the fallback back in there again unknown so there you go all right so it all depends on how you're laying out your your view your theme um, you can align it whichever way you want all right so I'm just going to leave that like so uh, the same is true for play mode unfortunately this game has only got single play mode um, you know what let me just hop out of this game real quick let's see if I can find one that has multiple of course it says multiplayer but it doesn't say single player let's see if we can find a uh, ah, good 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 okay cool so let me go into this one. The logic is identical. It's just pointing. Uh, it's just a separate UI, and you can tell it what um, folder to go grab your images from. Obviously, those images have to be named the same way um, as the play mode. And in the case of uh, genre, each of the images have to be have to be named the same way um, as genre. And actually, what I can do, I have genre text and play mode text. So what I'll do, I'll add those um, to the to the list. So there's genre, and I want four. Let's just increase the font so we can see what's going on in the center. So there you go. All right. So. In this case with genre, you would have to make sure that you have a, a, an image out there um, stored within, uh, you know, a folder of your choice, but in my case I've created a subfolder called genre, um, but you would need to have an image called shooter.png in order for this to pick it up, okay? So the same is true because we've got multiple entries, the same is true for play mode. So if I select play mode and change the font so we can read it, select the alignment to center, and I want maximum number of entries four, and there should be two listed. Okay. Normally when you view this stuff um, in big box, the entries are separated um, with a semicolon. Um, I manipulate the data and uh, I substitute the semicolon with a comma, um, comma space, just so it's um, readable. So again, for um, play mode uh, and play mode image, you can see and you can use this for debugging, okay, debugging your own theme. So for example, this one is expecting an image called cooperative.png and this one is expecting an image called multiplayer.png. Okay, and again, you can place those images in any subfolder you want. Um, in this case, I am storing them in a subfolder called Play Mode. All right, so that's how that works. The uh, orientation and alignment and number of entries and all that kind of good stuff. And you can still add uh, shadow effects to them and whatnot. Okay, now let's move on to region. Um, I don't ever recall seeing this being done in a theme. Um, not to say it wasn't impossible, it's just I haven't seen it. But anyway, this is a U UI element that you can uh, easily use. And again, we have the um, we have region text, um, and it uses the same method. Uh, number of entries. I've I've set it to one. But you can set it to, you know, however, up to four. So it's 
So I've got it set to one um, region image. It's the same as, uh, pr it pretty much works the same way as genre image and play mode image. But again, um, you know, I've only got it set to one because I want it um, centered on the, on the horizontal. Um, I don't have a fallback, unfortunately. I didn't really take the time to do a unknown region PNG, but you can. You can do so. Um, let's see. Um, let me exit without saving. I'm not sure. Yeah, there you go. So I'm just curious if this has multi multi region. Just curious at this point. Because um, some do. Okay, well in this case, this one doesn't. Um, hmm. And I'm not gonna spend all my time trying to hunt for games with multi-region on there. You'll just have to take my word for it that it will actually display multiple images um, according to the metadata out there, all right? Um, so let's see. I want to go into, and I have added all the, the known wheels, the wheel types um, to uh, the editor now. I don't want to cover that just yet. There was something that I had to change in my plugin, and the only way that I can do that is if I go to Arcade. Okay, cool. <clears throat> and what I'll do here, I'm going to add the genre text. Um, again, let me change that to four. Uh, let me change the font. Let me change the uh, text alignment. trying to remember did I let me just leave that there for this time being and let's run down through the list of games platform shooter action because what I've done here or what I've noticed specifically for arcade the metadata that's pulled in has things like um, fighting forward slash 2D and obviously that that value containing a forward slash would be invalid as far as trying to display an associated image so what I've actually done I've I've nixed uh, the forward slash um, so if it says fighting forward slash 2D it now just says fighting and then therefore you can leverage your existing um, genre um, images without doing anything uh, well you would be able to incorporate um, an image name with a forward slash so at least it will actually display an image how about that all right so those were pretty much the the new additions and one tweak just so that we can ensure we're, we're getting the uh, corresponding graphics um, I want to go into some of the real quick uh, changes. Um, let's see. Um, 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 um. Uh, I'm going to add date real quick. Um, I don't need to run this. Um, but whenever you add this UI element for date, and irrespective of the of the date formatting. This will now update uh, as and when the time updates um, when you're running your theme via Big Box. Okay, uh, that wasn't happening before. It would essentially refresh every time you uh, switch from view to view or game to game or whatever you were doing. Um, that that was just awful. So um, yeah, so now it will actually update as the um, time updates. All right, so that was that was uh, one. Um, 
user source. Let me see. The last time I used user source was on this theme, Neon. And it doesn't really matter which one I select, but if I just go into game, uh, you can barely see it, but it's here. And as you can see, um, it's now named Analog Clock XAML. And when I edit, I've changed the editor a little bit. It's a little bit uh, cleaner looking. Um, but, you know, I could essentially copy this and maybe I don't want that name. And I could just say, you know, analog, analog time, for example, right? And then just hit enter, paste that code in, and there you go. Now it's got analog time. So I've actually got two XAML source files out there that I can I can now select from, or if I don't, if I'm building a new one, I just, you know, this is new, edit, paste, <laughs> all right, you get the idea, all right, just, it just, it's just a lot more meaningful, at least you under, you know, you can see immediately what this user source um, is representing instead of having the application automatically generate a, um, a, a name for you, which doesn't mean anything. All right, so I'll put it back to analog clock. And I just want to kind of remove those. All right. Um, and as I mentioned, I made this larger, and I will go over that. Um, let's see. All right. Okay. So one of the big things or the, the thing that's really consumed my time in the past couple of weeks is ensuring that um, is, is really behind publish or the code generation. So there were a few things that I needed to, to, um, to, to, to correct. So I, it actually resulted in me in rebuilding or rewriting or restructuring, I should say, the code generator. Um, so there were a couple of things at play. One, the code generator needed to um, take into account some of the more recent changes to Big Box. Um, one of them was the um, multi-view support, or should I say, multi-device uh, multi, multi uh, view support. So for example, if I have um, uh, text games right here, maybe I want the uh, visuals to be a little bit different um, when I've selected an arcade platform or uh, Atari Jaguar, for example, okay? So the, the way in which that was implemented in, um, uh, within the theme, it has a subfolder. Um, the subfolder is the name, and I can go over this later, but it has the subfolder as the name of the view, and then inside that subfolder are basically all the platforms. Um, and I will go over that later uh, when we get to code generation because I'm going to show you some examples here. Um, so that was one that I really needed to take care of. Um, the other one was the new font solution um, that I believe uh, Jason had put out at the beginning of the week. And that wasn't too bad for me um, because I was deploying the fonts anyway to the, the when I'm publishing the theme, um, the last step in the process during finalization was it was analyzing all the fonts and then it would just simply copy the fonts to the fonts folder ready for the user to double click and install. However, obviously with the font solution and with the up and coming theme manager, um, Jason doesn't want the users to install fonts and I'm, I'm all for that. that, that's fantastic. So um, with that said, I move my um, uh, font logic from the very end of the, the, the finalization and I put it up front. 
So now what it does, it analyzes the fonts used in all the views for that specific theme. And once it's analyzed all the fonts, it, um, it can actually generate the code now using that information that it's gathered up front. So it knows the font family name and uh, it knows the associated file name. So it was actually relatively easy. I just moved code from the back to the front. Um, let's see, so multi-device game views. Oh, and I now generate, in some cases, 50% less code when I publish, okay? So some of these views were thousands and thousands of lines in, in, in size, just due to the nature of how this stuff is uh, working through um, my editor. Um, and now we can uh, generate half of that, which is great. Um, and uh, obviously the, 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 the positive effect of that is it's more efficient, it's faster, um, uh, and it's a lot easier to read if you were curious about the, you know, the code that it was building. Um, so let's actually create some themes using the new generator. I don't think there was anything else. It was really all about code generation in the past couple of past couple of weeks. So let's switch to uh, Fair and Illuminate. And um, I want to go into, let's see, horizontal view one. And because I've added these text fields, let me remove them. Okay. And as you can see, this UI element here, wheel. <clears throat> you, unfortunately, um, I'm not representing the wheel as it would at runtime uh, via big box that's extremely complicated and the wheel object itself is very closely uh, knitted um, with uh, big box unfortunately it's not something I can easily just associate and pass whatever data into it and it will it will show exactly how it will show in big box um, it's it's very complex so I've kept it real simple you take a UI element that you can essentially move around like so okay and you just tell it what you want to do in this case I want horizontal images the images are clear logos um, perhaps I want boxes and then you have all these properties to support it now don't criticize me on all these valid values um, that's going to change. I just had to put something out there because I was testing a whole spectrum of, of, of different wheel uh, types. So these will change based on the wheel type um, that you select. Okay, so don't don't blast me on this one. Um, and again, you can add effects. So in this case, if if you're showing boxes, the boxes can have shadows or blur or whatever whatever you want um, and then you can add a, an overall opacity to the wheel if you want to do that but anyway um, that's that's the wheel UI it's it's fairly simple um, because it's not WYSIWYG it's not showing you ultimately what it's what it's gonna look like in big box there's gonna be some trial and error unfortunately um, and I do apologize for that but it's it's either that or I spend the next couple of months trying to um, you know reverse engineer how it works and and have it represented in here uh, just for the editor and to be honest I'd, I'd rather just finish the editor and put it in the hands of you guys so um, so it was set to clear logo it's now set to boxes um, and I'm just curious yeah this is set to cover flow and it's showing boxes okay and that's that's cool so what we'll do um, I'm now going to publish and before I run big box um, I want to have a look at the, um, the generated uh, theme okay so that was fair and illuminate we've got views 
Okay, so it has built all these. The uh, whether or not you've actually defined um, the text-based um, views for platform and games, uh, they will exist in here. Um, ultimately, they'll be copied from uh, JSON's default theme um, so that they will always be present. You must have these. Um, so there are no subfolders in here because we, we haven't got specific configuration for different platforms. And I will uh, go over that in, in one second. So um, let's see. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we've got the, the filled two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And where did the other one come from? Oh, text games, which um, no game details, which was another mandatory uh, view, which um, I'm currently not supporting in here. Okay, so this was just simply copied over from the defaults. Uh, view folder. Again, it was just to ensure that these themes actually conform to the new rules that uh, Jason's put it out there in order for it to um, be accepted through the theme manager. All right. Okay, so let's change this up. So that was arcade. Let me pick. Um, well, I can do it either way, actually. So this was. Uh, we all won games, horizontal images, boxes. Okay, cool. Um, let's pick something with... Um, let's see what it looks like with Nintendo 64. Well, as you can see, the box cover is being stretched. Okay. And, and you know, six times out of ten, seven times out of ten, you can get away with that, but in this case, you can't get away with it. Not not for Nintendo 64. So, one of the reasons why I expanded this panel here was for this very reason. Okay, so what I just did here, this tells me that my default and the only settings that exist for horizontal wheel one games, the default. Um, I'm copying that and essentially what I'm going to do here is paste it against Nintendo 64. Now I've done this in the past, but the implementation was a little different, okay? Or at least the result was a little different. So now that we, you can clearly see that we have settings for Nintendo 64, see? So we have default and we have Nintendo 64. Click on uh, edit. We'll go in, we click, as you can see, it's set to fill, we don't want that, we want it set to uniform, we don't want that, <laughs> sorry, we don't want that alignment, okay, and uh, I don't want that, and I'll just do that, okay, now let's just see what uniform to fill looks like. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want that. Anyway, we'll have that. All right. So this is what Horizontal Wheel 1 games looks like for Nintendo 64 only. For everything else, it will look like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and republish. And we'll go into the themes folder again. And we'll go into views. And lo and behold, here we go. We have a subfolder named Horizontal Wheel 1 Games. Okay. The default resides here. The platform specific resides within that subfolder. Okay. So again, that was another feature that um, Jason had added to uh, Big Box. And I had to play catch up and make sure my code was going to conform to that. 
Um, okay, so now that I have that, we are going to go into big box. And I can't remember what theme I was in the last time I put a video together. It could very well have been this. It was this one. Okay. All right. So um, I have got the wheel view here. And as you can see, I'm using horizontal devices. All right. And let me just hit the space bar and toggle through the different views that I have for platform now. All right, so I was using, what was I using for this? Banners, yeah, vertical banners. All right. And uh, toggle view again, text, which you've seen on numerous occasions. It's good to finally get out of that mode. So again, so I have what, three? One horizontal for device, one vertical for banner and text view. All right, that's that's what I have at least so far. Um, so let me just go into GameCube real quick. And I've kind of lost track of what view is what, but it doesn't really matter. So for this, we have um, horizontal for boxes and let's switch the view to cover flow all right and then we'll switch to this one this is if memory serves this is full screen cover flow and yeah, there's no video or no video support for this particular view. Let me let me just double check that. We are in uh, yeah wheel cover um, yeah full screen cover flow. Even though I'm not doing a full screen cover flow, but so yeah, that's why there's no um, there's no video uh, playing. So I opted to use the um, screenshot game screenshot. Um, and then I've added wall view. And I'm not positive on this one, but I don't recall if this view supports video either. But anyway, there's a wall view. Uh, what else was there after wall view? Yeah, and text. <laughs> which we've seen a gazillion times. And then the uh, vertical for um, clear logos, I believe, is what I uh, selected. Yeah, and then we're back to um, clear logo. Uh, we're back to horizontal with boxes. Okay. Um, now, one of the things, if, if you were to look at this video and compare it to even the last one, actually, where I'm showing um, the, the theme running within BigBox. One thing that you will notice, notice when you hop from uh, platform to uh, the games view is that the games view resulted in a black screen and then it would ultimately show um, all the images and, and UI and whatnot, okay? Well, as you can see here, you know, I have a particular transition uh, set for horizontal. And as I select, it's seamlessly going into the next um, game view, uh, no problem, uh, and ultimately into the, the options panel. So that was something that I had um, fixed a couple of weekends ago. Um, it, was, it, was, uh, it was bugging me because obviously when I wanted to present this stuff in, in video, it, it wasn't as clean as it, as it should have been. Um, but it was a, a low bug on, on uh, the grand scheme of things on my to-do list. But anyway, I, I found it by accident um, and I fixed it. So this is the way it's supposed to be. Um, and I think that was, that was it. I mean, it was fairly rapid. There was a lot of work that went into this. Um, what I can do if you'll 
at least curious, I can go into one of these and it doesn't really matter which one, they all have text. So I'll pick horizontal wheel one and let's look for font family. And as you can see, here is the recent font solution being included here. It's awesome. Uh, it's just so awesome. Um, I mean, it's so awesome that Jason had, um, you know, put this enhancement in there. It just makes it so much easier. You don't, you don't have to worry about this stuff anymore. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of share that with you. I, I know whoever is looking to the left hand side and seeing the, the total number of lines of code and be like, oh, that's outrageous. Well, I do have reasons for, um, for, for why it does what it does. Um, and as we're in the code, I might as well kind of briefly explain. So as you can see, at least 1500 lines of which uh, are essentially calling um, this, this function within my plugin called get property value. Okay. And as you can see, it's all the way up here. For the most part, it's getting values such as enabled, whether or not the UI uh, element is enabled or not. Um, and then it's X and Y, width and height, um, and things like orientation. But anyway, for the most part, it's it's really the location and size and whether, in it, whether or not it's enabled, okay? The premise behind this, or the, the reasoning behind this was that before Jason had included um, views that could have specific platform attributes. I was actually handling it real time. Um, so I have, and I still have, uh, configuration files per platform per view, um, or view per platform. And this plugin would simply look at the configuration and say, oh, I'm currently looking at N64, what should I do? Oh, I. I need to uh, have the box cover set to uh, uniform as opposed to stretch. And then when I select a different platform, if, if there is no configuration for that, it uses the default and the default is saying, oh, the box should be set to stretch or fill. Um, so that's what it was doing. Um, now I'm still using, even though I'm generating multiple instances of that view, Per platform, um, or or just a, a single one, if if you didn't if you didn't do uh, multiple platform uh, settings, I'm still using this method because um, the UI elements will scale according to whatever resolution or whatever resolution your desktop is in. Okay, so. Um, there's actually some smarts behind the scenes. It knows the resolution. In my case, it knows the resolution that I created the theme in, which is not 16.9, by the way. I'm using some kind of oddball resolution on my laptop. It's like 3240 by 2160. It's almost 4K, but not quite. Um, and the... Um, so when you translate a theme from uh, one resolution like this to a resolution on here, uh, in this example I'm running in 4K, you want all the elements to be positioned exactly where they were intended, okay, or the designer intended. And that is what my plugin is doing, okay. So there isn't all this complicated messing around with view box and all this garbage. I'm handling it. I'm handling it with, uh, with my plugin. All right, um, and it's and it's quick. Uh, I've I've spent a couple of months streamlining um, the, um, the the plugin logic to handle this. So, but anyway, this in combin with a reduction of lookups to various properties now because they've they've been handled, they've been generated um, within the views themselves. Um, the code is far far smaller.
all right, and therefore more efficient when when running. But um, yeah, I just give a, a brief explanation on that. And if that went over your head, that's totally fine. You can just ignore the last 10 minutes of my rambling. But uh, yeah, that's, um, that's basically where the, the editor stands right now. Um, I, I made some adjustments to the wheels uh, late last night, early this morning, 2 a.m. I called it a day or, or called it a night. Um, I've still got some uh, subtle changes to make on, on what wheels are allowed to go on, on what views, but um, it, it's, it's pretty close for sure. So um, there's that. And then I'll be working on um, elements where you can activate transitioning uh, so that, you know, if you want the box cover to uh, use a transition and you've set that transition up specifically in big box, it will engage it only if you've told it that you wish to use a transition. So um, I'll circle back on all the different UI elements that uh, Jason is supporting for transitions and make sure that that code is available as a on-off switch um, for the corresponding UI elements in here. And then the big one after that is storyboarding and um, it will work with these views. I, I did a trial run um, and uh, shared, shared uh, that, that test theme um, with another with another user on the forum rinse wind just to make sure that it wasn't just my my setup so storyboarding will work with the way that um, I generate the code so I'm really excited to 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 include storyboarding at some point but it's got to be easy to use it, it, it's got to be easy to um, come up with how you edit these values and that's just going to take a little bit of thought Fortunately, that is not my next item on the to-do list. To-do list, it's transitions. So I have some time to think about um, how I want the storyboard editor to uh, to appear for the end user. But anyway, I hope um, I hope you like uh, what you're seeing and some of the additions that I've added. I think they're pretty cool, uh, personally. Um, they did take some time. Um, and uh, you know, like I said before, it is coming together. It is getting fairly close. Um, and certainly when you see different wheel designs coming up, coming up now on different views, you know, you can see it, you know, you can see the, 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 the package coming together. So anyway, um, that's where I stand. It's probably going to take me a couple more weeks um, before I, I, I post another video. It may, it may be another three weeks. We'll see. Um, it all depends on what Jason throws out there. Um, I'm trying to stay on top of um, all the all the changes um, just so that I'm kind of in compliance with uh, um, with what he's wanting and, and what will be uh, reviewed um, as part of the uh, theme manager. So anyway, I will see you in a two to three weeks. Thanks a lot.